Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss how dressing for the office has changed over the years and what you should wear to work or for your office environment today. In most offices today, business casual is a firmly rooted dress code and to learn more about it, please check out our business casual video here. As far as dressing for the office goes, a lot depends on the culture, but over the years, things have changed dramatically, and today we go through the decades and really give you a specific rundown of what items to wear, what not to wear, and particularly what shoes you can focus on. In the last 30 years, the formality scale has dropped dramatically, and today probably just one out of 10 office workers wears a full suit. As with many trends in menswear, the two world wars had a huge impact on style and dress code for the office, and it usually meant that it was more casual or at least more utilitarian. In the 1950s, there was the post-war boom. Materials were again plentiful, at least in the US. And so people wore suits, white dress shirts, ties, and proper Oxfords. The classic black Capto Oxford was definitely the staple shoe at the time. Of course, characters like James Dean popularized a much more casual and youthful look with undershirts. However, that didn't catch on in the office. If you wanted to work at a proper office, you could not show up dressed like James Dean. During the 1960s, mod style had a heavy influence. Nevertheless, people still wore suits. In terms of style, you could see that lapels got narrower and so did the ties. Trousers usually had huge cuffs or turnups that were sometimes in excess of two inches. The big casualty during this decade was the hat. While still worn by older gentlemen who considered the hat to be an essential part of their business wardrobe, younger men simply went without it. Of course, the 60s were great for fantastic menswear fabrics that were heavier and not as soft as they are today. At the same time, they draped really well. At the same time, man-made materials were becoming a lot more popular, so you would see nylon, polyester, and all kinds of other things blended into classic menswear, which eventually would fade again, but at that time, it was at its height and was very popular to have artificial fibers in your business wardrobe. The style influencers at the time, just like the Beatles, still wore suits, dress shirts, and ties. In the 1970s, the disco and hippie style dominated men's fashion, and that even had an influx on the office. People still wore suits, but they had a lot bolder patterns, lapels had gotten wider again, colors were a lot bolder, and everything was different. Lanvin, Pierre Cardin, or Yves Saint Laurent were really popular designers that oftentimes licensed their name to have suits produced even for the American market. In the early 70s, you'd still see flared pants, but by the end, they became more European and slimmed down. The ties were longer and much wider, and the rise of your pants was much lower. In terms of shoes, the Derby shoe became more popular now, but in very traditional white collar environments, you would still see the black Capto Oxford as the dominant business shoe. In the 80s, things changed a bit again. Designers like Giorgio Armani created a more unstructured suit that was quite wide, the gorge of the lapel was low, and eventually the power suit became really popular. Just think of Wall Street. In the US, Ralph Lauren also became really popular, and he always had a taste for wider ties and wider lapels. Shirts were oftentimes Winchester shirts and had bold stripes or color combinations that resembled the typical power style. The classic office shoe was still the black Capto Oxford. Sometimes you would see black Darbys or things like Gucci loafers in black. Even though you had power suits on the one hand, on the other hand, combinations became much more acceptable for office wear now. Also, TV shows like Miami Vice popularized the style of wearing a t-shirt with a jacket on top. Obviously, this wasn't worn to the office, but it showed the desire to casualize a formal wardrobe. The 1990s were definitely at the heyday of office wear and men's fashion. Vogue declared the end of the era of the power suit, and things became a lot more casual. In the US, Casual Friday became a lot more popular, and people who quit their traditional jobs and started working on tech startups in, in Silicon Valley really changed the way people dressed to the office. Everything became more casual, 
and not wearing a suit was a traditional F you to the classic establishment and the way they dressed. In terms of shoes, you could still see anything from a classic black toe Oxford in a law firm, for example, all the way to new balance sneakers with tech startups. In the 2000s, the influence of Silicon Valley further increased. New generations were really not interested in wearing business suits, they were not used to wearing suits, and they certainly didn't want to wear it to the office. Fast fashion started to dominate the retail world, and so quick turnover of many different seasons and trends with very low quality and very little substance became the mainstream. Also, jeans or denim had become universally acceptable no matter whether you go to church or a fine restaurant. In the early 2000s, jackets became a lot shorter and suits became a lot slimmer. A really popular shoe in the US for business was a tassel loafer. And even today, you can find men who are about to retire wearing the same 90s suits that are quite wide in the cut with their sometimes brown or oxblood or black tassel loafers. In terms of shoes, the tassel loafers from the 90s became less and less popular and you would found a lot more shoe companies that used the internet to bring shoes from the manufacturer directly to the consumer, thus cutting out the middleman and saving the end consumer quite a bit of money. One of those companies is Ace Marks, and the shoes we're showing you today in the video are mostly from them. If you want to check out their website, you can do so here and they kindly supported us in making this video. Today, in most office environments, business casual and casual Friday is the most prevalent dress code. At the same time, a lot of people don't really understand what it means specifically. The boundaries between work and office have been blurred. You'll find a lot more working from home now or working out of the office. At the same time, surveys indicate that one half of senior level management thinks that their employees dress too casually. So some men are really into dressing up and they love it when they can wear suits to the office, while others would rather wear sweatpants. Overall though, I think there are more men interested in classic men's clothing and dressing up today than they were 10 or 15 years ago. So what should you wear to work? Honestly, a lot of it depends on your workplace and the culture there. That being said, we're big supporters of the plus and minus rule. So don't just look what the employee handbook says, but actually observe what people are wearing at the office and at your workplace. Now, ideally, you wanna stay within one step above of what people are wearing. Ideally, you don't wanna step below because it definitely has an impact. People see it and they will judge you, even it may be just subconsciously. You've probably heard the old saying, don't dress for the job you have, but for the job you want. That has a caveat. Many CEOs today dress very casually because they're already at the top of the company and they don't have to impress anyone. At the same time, if you have client contact and you want others to respect you at the office, dressing well and dressing a step up is important. Now, that being said, sometimes your manager or superior can feel threatened if you outdress him. So that's one aspect to keep in mind. You don't wanna offend people and hurt your chances of climbing the ladders simply because they feel threatened by the way you dress. Honestly, if that happens at your workplace, it's probably time to change jobs anyway because that's not the kind of culture that you likely thrive in, especially not if you like to dress up. If you want a full rundown on what business casual means today, please check out the video here. That aside, now we discuss five wardrobe staples that you can incorporate in most office wardrobes. The first item is a classic navy blazer. Even though you never have to wear suits at work, having a blazer is ideal because it makes your otherwise very informal outfit rather formal without being over the top. To learn more about the blazer, along with all of its options, what you can wear and what's a good choice, please check out our in-depth blazer guide here. The next item you wanna invest in are quality cotton chinos. Ideally, you get them in some khaki color. You can also go to lighter with stone or darker with navy. Those are classic staple slacks that sit in between jeans and dress slacks in terms of formality. You can also wash them at home so you don't have to rack up dry cleaning costs and they're just a wonderful business staple. You can also wear them just with dress shirts or with sport coats or a blazer and they will always look good. 
Of course, you also wanna invest into dress shirts. If you don't work in a super formal office, you can be a little bit more relaxed with your shirts, you can have stripes, you can add some colors, you can maybe have light checks, and you can decide if you wanna have button cuffs or French cuffs for cufflinks. Cufflinks are certainly a bit more formal. I personally like them because it gives me a chance to wear all the different cufflinks in my collection. If you don't wear neckwear to the office, I suggest you go mostly with checked shirts. You can incorporate different colors, such as blue, green, or red. And I'd opt for a button-down collar because it stands up more nicely. The tips always stay down. Because if you wear a jacket, the tips should always stay underneath. I also go with button cuffs rather than French cuffs. Otherwise, not having the neckwear, but the French cuffs, it's kind of a clash of formality. Of course, if you love cufflinks overall, you can still wear them. On the other hand, at a lot of offices today, neckwear is not required anymore, and it's simply something that you can wear to express yourself. If you don't wanna go with a traditional three-fold business tie, you can opt for different things, such as knit ties, for example, which are different in texture, they're more casual, and they're definitely office appropriate. If you decide against neckwear, I suggest to always have a pocket square in your blazer on your sport coat, because it really upgrades your look, makes it more unique, polished, and finished. In terms of shoes, the rules have relaxed a lot. At a traditional office, you can go with a classic black cap toe Oxford. At the same time, brown at the office today is probably more popular in black if you look at all offices across the US and Europe. It really doesn't matter if you go with derby shoes or monk straps. In my opinion, a great shoe for the office, especially for young men, is the double monk strap shoe. It's the perfect amalgamation and it's right in between the classic office leather dress shoe with a leather sole and a sneaker. Even though you can wear it in black, I prefer colors in burgundy red or maybe brown because it's casual enough to wear for a happy hour after work but also perfectly appropriate for most office environments. That being said, most offices today are casual enough to wear brown shoes in pretty much any instance. And if you wanna go with brown, there's so many different shades all the way from a lighter tan to a medium tan to a medium brown, dark chestnut brown, and really dark brown. I would definitely suggest to stay clear of sneakers and always invest in a quality pair of dress shoes. Now down the line, it always pays to invest in quality dress shoes because the cost per wear goes down. You may think that's easier said than done because if you're just starting out your career and this is your first office job, it may be hard to come up with all the money for nice quality dress shoes. First of all, you can save a lot of money by buying the right kind of dress shoes. So please check out these videos on five men's dress shoes every man should have. That aside, you can buy quality leather dress shoes at different price points. You can invest $200, $300, or $2,000. Now, to learn the difference between shoes in that price category, please check out this video here. That being said, Ace Marks provides a range of quality office dress shoes that won't break the bank. Does Ace Marks produce the best men's leather dress shoes ever made? Absolutely not. However, what they do offer is a really big bang for the buck because they sell directly from manufacturer to you as a consumer, thus saving the middleman markup. If I would have to pick just three shoes that are appropriate for office wear, I'd go with the black Halfbrook Oxford, the burgundy double monk strap, as well as their brown penny loafer. Last but not least, one often overlooked detail in office wear are socks. A lot of men wear short socks or mid-calf socks, and when they slide down, they expose their hairy calves, which is still unprofessional in this day and age. To prevent that, you should go with over-the-calf socks that stay up, and for a range of different socks in fun colors, please check out our shop here. And we'll also have a free guide on how to pair shoes, socks, and pants so you look the part, so check it out here. In today's video, I was wearing two different outfits. The first one consisted of a checked dress shirt with a button-down collar and barrel cuffs or button cuffs with a pair of khaki chinos and a pair of over-the-calf socks from Fort Belvedere that match kind of the chino color as well as the red of my Ace Marks double monk strap shoes. They have a very elegant Italian last and 
I really like wearing them because they're a mix between casual and formal. Later on, I kept on that same outfit and simply added a navy double-breasted blazer, which is part of a suit, and I added a pocket square with kind of a turquoise blue and a paisley pattern that pops and just creates a visual interest that rounds out my outfit overall, even though I skipped the neckwear for this video because most men probably don't wear neckwear. And it's a typical office outfit that I could wear with or without the blazer. If I'd opted against the blazer, I'd just keep the jacket in my office. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our dress code series, particularly the business casual guide, as well as the five men's shoes every man should have. If you subscribe to our channel, videos like this come right here in box. And if you're looking for quality men's leather dress shoes that don't break the bank, I strongly suggest you take a look at Ace Mark's website.